So to do a visualization, what I'm going to do is to add a new menu item. And let's say show results. And double click on that. And we can write a try cage. So in this try cage, let us select one of the random uh, values from this predicted label. So first thing first I need to do is to declare them on top so that I can use them uh, as globally because the results are over here. So I just will go there and uh, I'm just adding them here. So let's initialize them with null and also this one to be null. And then go to line number two, one, two, two. Okay, so I think I was here. Okay, now what I did is just I should this one because I have already declared them as global. So the results of the prediction and the results of the actual results are stored here. I will check that if predicted labels equals equals null or uh, actual labels equals equals null. I can do something like throw an exception and we can say no predictions found. Okay. And what I will do now is since I have some data in my predicted labels and also in my uh, actual labels I will select randomly any of the predicted uh, labels any any randomly select any of the predicted labels and see who that person is by looking at its image and also for the same person we will see the actual label and find a person from the test data and see if that person their pictures or uh, they are the same person or not so how we can do that is let's say a random number generator and this is will be a random is equal to new random number and that index that I will use for the person is random dot next and here we need to provide a range and that how should be the maximum value so I say that predicted labels dot count minus one okay should be less than that and the uh, integer of the predicted label let's say let's say this person predicted labels of uh, index so this is the label that we have predicted and uh, similarly we also find the actual label for that person what was the actual label instead of predicted labels actual labels and now we have the labels for that person i will go to the train data and the test data to find out from the test data actually since we did the testing data so from the testing data we will go and find out which person is that so i'm going to write a link to the image in testing data okay where i'm g dot label is equal to equal equals our label predicted label okay select that and select mg dot images so which one image do we want to select is a random image that I want to select random so since that person has uh, many images two images or three images for testing we can select any one of them so which one to select is random dot next and then we can do like ing dot images dot count so sorry dot count okay so that one will give us some images okay and uh, uh, out of those images, maybe there are many images that it might return, but I want the first image. 
first or delete it. In the clone that image, I just want a, a cloning. I don't want to the reference. In fact, I need the actual image, a, re, a copy of that image. So we read a random image from the test data whose label is same as the prediction label. And I also do the same thing for the actual label. So in this case, we call it the actual image and we are comparing with the actual label. So if both labels are same, then this one, this one should be the image of the same person. The images may be different, but it should be of the same person. If the labels are not matching, then definitely these will be different images. Okay, if they are same, we want to see them if they are same or not. And also we can uh, optionally put a text on them to show which one is the predicted one and which one is the actual one. So we can write, a, uh, put a text on CV invo dot put text on this predicted image predicted image and we say this one is the predicted image just predicted and the location of this point let's say it is position 30 30 any location that you want phone face dot phone face dot let's make it the simplest one or the plain one and the scale should be the same as we have and a new scalar that the color that we want is let's say 255 or if it is a white then it should be a black and that's it okay so this is the text that we put for the image and we also do the same thing for the actual image also and we give it a title that this is the actual image and then we can come create a montage of the image by horizontally concatenating an image so in my previous videos i have shown how to concatenate different images together if they are of the same size then we can use the open cv's concatenation as well so let's say that helper class dot h h horizontal concatenate images is predicted image comma actual image and we can save them in a result of let's say output or ing output and this one is saying uh, cannot convert from gray to an RGB image. If that is the case, we can easily do something like this. Dot convert VGR, comma byte. That's it. So simple. And also for this one. And then we can show the result in a picture box. Dot image is equal to IMGR. Dot so for this ace bitmap, you also need to install a new package that is mgu.cv.bitmap otherwise this function will not be available so let's go ahead and test once again so face landmark load the data this is the data that i loaded that's great and this is the test train split it's done already and the hog feature extraction it is also completed and then train SVM. Okay, the model trained model is also loaded. And the test SVM on the image that is excellent. So we have an accuracy of 97%. So only one case has failed here. Okay, that's even better. And the show results. So so you can see that this is the actual. This is the actual image, or I mean the test image, and uh, the model produced this predicted image, but this person is same, although the image is of different for the same person. So you can see again, this has predicted this guy, okay. You can see this is the same guy, okay. We can, randomly we are checking, this is also the same guy, just correct. 
this is also correct both are same okay it is repeatedly generating some numbers excellent so this is the same guy but i don't know for which person it has produced something wrong so we need to uh, check it for that person. but as you can see we use simple hog this is a very robust features that we can use for any task and here i use for image class of a, a face recognition but in an improvement what i suggest is instead of using all these background you can see this is the empty background which also will uh, be used as a feature the an improvement could be only to detect the face first we should detect the face from an image and then we should extract the features that we want this will definitely increase the accuracy and i hope that it will touch about 100 percent so for this small database uh, it has already achieved 98 percent accuracy the last thing before closure that i want to show is where is my the svm model when you go to the trained SVM model, let's say that open folders in the Explorer. And from here, when you go to the bin in the debug, in the debug, you will find here the face underscore SVM. So this face underscore SVM, which is a 46 MB file, and we can open it and see what is written inside it. So this is the actually the model that I save here. You can save it anywhere. You can load it from the, there, whatever you want. As you can see, some of the ideas that we have already used is the kernel that we have used, the type of the SVM that we have, the gamma, the value of the C, and all those parameters, plus the learned support vectors for each class have also been stored here. So I hope this uh, tutorial give you an idea how we can extract the HOG features and how we can use SVM for face recognition. And I hope to see you in another video.